Welcome to this lesson in engineering circuit analysis. We're going to discuss the op-amp terminals, uh, terminal voltage and currents here, which is extremely important. So the goals for this lesson is basically we want to understand how an op-amp is uh, basically connected to the external power supplies. We have V plus and V minus, and I just want to kind of show you how that's done so you're not struggling with that as we start to learn other things uh, as we go on and, and design our circuits. And then I have kind of two things here. I want to talk about the voltage references and the current references. And basically what that means is that I want to draw a set of circuits and show you the reference directions that you need to keep in your mind, here in the beginning anyway, as far as where the voltages are, what their polarities are, and where the currents are, and where their polarities are. Because what we're going to do here in the beginning is just do a quick set, a quick analysis of the basic op-amp to write down the equations, Kirchhoff voltage law and Kirchhoff current law, uh, with the nice unique flavor of having an op-amp sit sitting in the middle of it. So you have to have the reference directions in place in order to do that. And so once we get at the end of that analysis, you'll, you'll understand fundamentally how the op-amp works. So we're going to just discuss those reference directions right now. All right, so let's go ahead and just jump right in. We're going to draw our first circuit to define the voltage variables that we're going to have as we do this analysis. So here's the op-amp, and here's the output. Okay, you already know that from now. We have a non-inverting input and uh, an inverting input with plus and minus, right? And so we're going to have this guy coming off like this, and we're going to have this guy coming off like this. Now, the interesting thing about op-amps, as we've talked about, is that you have these external supplies. So we need to talk a little bit about how to connect them up. So here's the first one, and you can kind of remember that that's called V+, plus. that's your positive power supply. And you have another one here, which is the V negative, and we'll discuss exactly why we have V plus and V minus in a little more detail as we go along here. But we have to talk about how we're going to actually connect these guys up. So in reality, what you're going to have, this V plus terminal is going to be coming all the way around connected to some voltage source with a positive negative polarity, uh, just like it, uh, as you might guess. And then we're going to connect everything down. Let me go ahead and draw V minus. We'll have this negative Notice that this guy is going to be negative positive, so it's going to be reversed. And everything is going to be connected here to a common reference node. Remember we did the, the node voltage method of circuit analysis where we said, hey, when we do the node voltage, we have to have a common node that everything is measured relative to, and that's this. You can consider this to be zero volts, or however you want to think about it, this is basically zero volts. So coming up from here, this power supply right here is that many volts higher than the common, and that's what's connected to V plus. And then this guy, this power supply goes down below, because this is zero, and this is going down, and this is negative voltage down here, and that's why it's connected to V minus. So in reality, if this were a battery, you'd have this guy flipped one way and this guy flipped the other way to connect to V plus and V minus. Now, the labeling here of V plus is usually connected to something called the VCC supply. And this one's going to be VCC also, but notice it's backwards, so really this is a negative voltage and this is a positive voltage. VCC, I want to, this is some of the things I wanted to kind of discuss with you. Uh, VCC, the VCC means common collector. So it's a common collector supply voltage, basically, is what it is. Now, why do we introduce all this stuff here? you got to realize that op-amps are part of a larger picture. In reality, inside of this op-amp is a bunch of transistors, and you haven't learned what a transistor is, but a transistor is basically an amplifier, a building block amplifier. We, we connect them in a certain way to create this thing called an op-amp, which is great, but the, the transistor itself can be uh, configured to be an amplifier. Okay. Now, one part of a transistor that you'll learn later is called the collector. It's just one of the terminals of a transistor called the collector. So common collector is referencing the transistor component inside of the op-amp, really. You don't have to really know anything about collectors. You don't have to understand what a common collector is. I'm just telling you that VCC means common collector, and it comes from the heritage of the transistor, which is what's inside of this box. But what you need to know is that when you see VCC anywhere, it just means power supply. That's all it means to you. Power supply voltage. And Positive VCC is connected up here to V plus, and the negative, notice they're both labeled VCC, so these are, in this case, equal and opposite. This guy's negative, uh, so if this is 10 volts, for instance, this would be like a negative 10 volts connected to the negative terminal there. Okay? Now, we have this positive input and negative input, which we've already talked about many times over. Now, we have to measure everything relative to ground, so let me go ahead and extend this ground off to the left. 
Now the inverting terminal, this guy is called the inverting terminal here. The voltage input here is measured relative to ground from that inverting terminal and that's going to be called V1. Okay. Now the voltage input here for the non-inverting terminal is called V sub 2. So you see why I wanted to devote a lesson to this without jumping in straight into analyzing a circuit because you need to know intuitively what V2 is and what V1 is. The power supply stuff is nice, but reality of it is once you hook that up, you don't have to really deal with it too much in your analysis. But the V2 and the V minus, uh, the V1, you need to make sure you understand. V1 in our analysis is always going to correspond to the, the negative input terminal, the inverting input. V2 is always going to correspond to the positive. So one way to help you remember that is you see how V1 here has the number 1 here, which is like a, a line or a dash? Well, that corresponds to the dash of the negative input. So I kind of think of these two being the same because I have a, a kind of a line here and a line here. And then V2 just comes from that. Because later we're going to write equations, and then it'll be useful for you to remember, oh, V1 is a negative terminal. And so I'm trying to kind of drill that into you a, a little bit. And what we have, uh, most importantly, off on the output side, this is the output. You measure the output here, relative again to ground, V0, or V0, or VO, however you want to think of it. So what you have here at the most basic, basic, fundamental uh, level with an op amp is you have inputs going on the left, some amplification going on, and then you have an output signal called V0 or VO, however you want to think of it, and all of them are positive reference directions relative to a common ground, which we're going to be taking to be essentially zero volts, and the power supplies are also uh, connected relative to that same common ground as the power supplies, or as the input and the output signals. Okay, So that's basically all I want to say about the reference voltage directions. And the reason we're writing this down, by the way, is because here in a few minutes we're going to be hooking up resistors to all of these little components, so you need to know V0 goes from here to here and V1 goes from here to here because you might be writing a Kirchhoff voltage law going all the way around this thing, and so you need to know what your reference directions are, and that's why we're taking the time. Now, along the lines of this, this these are called the, uh, the voltage variables, the voltage variables, we want to also understand the current variables, or write them down. So that's what we're going to do right now. So we're going to write the exact, draw the exact same circuit that we have right here. Everything's going to be the same, except instead of these voltage variables, we're going to write the current variables down so that you'll understand their reference direction. So what I'm going to do is draw that just a little bit displaced over to the right to give me a little bit of space. So here you go. You have an output terminal. You have something up here called V plus. You have something down here called V minus. V plus and V minus, as you already know, are connected. Uh, two power supplies, external, plus, minus. Now you know this one's called VCC, right? And this one is connected right here, but it's backwards because you have to have negative voltage there, and that one is called, uh, also labeled VCC, but it's, it's really negative VCC because it's backwards, so we'll put VCC right there, okay? And then you already know that you have a positive input and a negative input. We already talked about that. And this guy has an input and an input like this. All right, make sure I have everything right. You can extend this ground over this direction if you want. So now what we want to do is, is write all of the reference directions for the currents. Now it's a little bit weird, but what we're going to assume as we do our analysis, because you have to assume something, right? When you do mesh current or whatever, you have to assume some direction for the current, and then you do your calculations, and then you see if you were right. So what we're going to assume is all of these currents going, you know, all because the, there's current coming from the power supply, there's current on the output, current on the input, and all this, we're going to assume that all of these currents flow into the op amp. So what I mean by that is, this current from the output, actually we're going to assume for the sake of analysis that I sub, sub zero, I naught, is actually going into the op amp. Remember the negative terminal is, I, is V sub one, right? So the input current here is actually going to be I sub 1, and we're going to assume that it flows into the op amp. We're going to assume that this input current is going to be called I sub 2, and that's also flowing into the op amp. And then we have the uh, current that's flowing from the power supplies into this op amp that's being consumed by the electronics to do the amplification process. We're going to assume that this current is also flowing into the op amp. We're going to call this I sub C because VCC, but we're going to call it I sub C plus because this is the positive side of the, of the power supply, so we call it I sub C plus. And then we're going to call this guy flowing up, uh, where should we draw it? Let's go and do it right here. There's a current going through that from that power supply into there. We're going to call that 
I sub C because VCC, but we're going to call it I sub C minus. So you see, now we have a current labeled for every possible path into this op amp. We have inverting input, non-inverting input, power supply, power supply, output. Now, in reality, the currents are not going to flow this way. I mean, you know they're not because of the way you, you can just tell, for instance, the output. The output might be flowing into the op amp, but depending on the direction of the input signal, if it's going up or down, the output current is going to be flowing out, right? The input currents, we're drawing them as flowing in, but if you have a sinusoidal input, it's flipping back and forth. Sometimes the current might be flowing the other direction. But for the sake of this stuff, don't confuse it by thinking about alternating current or anything like that. Think of these things as direct current, just DC operation. You have an input, an input, you have input power, input power, and you have an output. You would expect the output to go the other way, but we're assuming everything goes in just so we can write simple Kirchhoff current law equations in a few minutes. And what you're going to find is that some of these things are going to be flowing in the opposite direction. You'll get negative signs for some of them. And that's totally fine. It's just like mesh current. You get a mesh current answer, you get a negative number, and you know that it's flipped around going the other way. So let me make sure I have everything in my notes written down. These are just references for analysis. The current can really flow the other way. I think I pretty much said everything. Same thing with these voltages. Uh, the output, if it's, for instance, a sinusoid, might be sw swinging the other direction. Plus minus might be minus plus temporarily. Or if you flip the polarity of these around, then the output might be flipped around too. But for the reference, this is what we're going to do to start our analysis. So let's go ahead and move on to the next section, and we will... Uh, actually start to talk about the gain of these amplifiers and how they're actually used and start to do some basic analysis of, of how to use them.